This video is going to go over how to export a garment out of Marvelous Designer and the settings we use, uh, taking it into ZBrush and splitting up into individual Z remesh polygroups uh, in which we can give it a bit of thickness and interesting ways of developing on top of that and basically getting rid of any errors. Also at the same time, um, how to repair any splits that we've done in Marvelous Designer, uh, combining them together so they're one piece, just a, a more convenient workflow when we're working back inside of uh, ZBrush. At this stage, you should have your final garment draped on top of your character, um, positioned in the way you'd like it. It could be comprised of multiple pieces. Um, the next stage would be taking one of these and putting it into ZBrush. So there's um, a, basically a workflow that we follow in which we can prepare it in ZBrush so we can sculpt it on because when we take it out of um, Marvelous Design, it's just one single piece of polygon. So uh, first of all, I'd start with one piece, for example, the shirt here. I'm going to select all the, uh, the layouts of the piece that I want. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that this geometry is going to have a particular resolution and then that resolution is defined by something called the particle distance. So the particle distance has uh, a value for each one of these. So once I've selected these, I can see that they will have a, a particle distance of five. So the lower the particle distance basically means that there's more simulation points happening here. And then that results in a higher polygon um, or a higher triangle count garment. So depending on how much detail you want to extract out of here, I'd be putting a particular particle distance. You don't really want to go below five for large things. So with that selected, uh, we can just go to file and then export. What we're going to do here is export selected. So the pieces of the garment that we want. Once I've clicked that, I'm going to find a decent place to export the OBJ and I'm just going to call it shirt one. you'll be met with a couple of options. So what we want to do is export this as a single object, so just one file that we can use. Also at the same time, uh, we, don't any, we don't want any of the pieces welded because when it comes to ZBrush, uh, it gives us more functionality when they're all separate pieces and not stuck together. Uh, we also want to give it uh, a, th a setting of thin. So again, we're just going to give thickness in ZBrush to just make it more malleable. Uh, and the really important stuff is the scale, so making sure that it's in centimetres and that the scale set to 100, because sometimes that can, can be an issue. So once um, we go over to ZBrush, this is basically the, uh, the example of what we're trying to achieve. I'm just going to take it back to a basic sphere. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to be importing an OBJ. So OBJs are imported on the right side under tools. You uh, you might be familiar with um, FBX plugins, which are a different file format. But if you want an OBJ, it's going to have to come through this this button here. So clicking import uh, and then navigate to where your export is. That's going to bring in the shirt. Um, one feature of ZBrush is that it's not going to show the inside face of geometry. Um, and that's true of games engines and stuff, but it's not so useful when we're looking at the garment just for to see if there's any errors or it's, it's identical to the one we want. So if you want to change that, uh, come onto the right side and then go down to display properties. It should be near the bottom. Uh, under display properties, there's a button called double. And basically what that's going to do, it's not going to change the geometry itself, but it's just going to visualize the inside edge. Uh, or the inside faces so we can see what it's like. Um, at this stage, I'd go around just to check that there's no errors because we're going to go through a lot of processes. It would kind of suck if halfway through we discovered that there was errors. So at this stage with um, that display property, just check that there's no, no major errors that you need to change. Um, so looking at this mesh, what you might find is when we smooth it, it's all broken up into individual pieces. They're not connected together. Uh, and then also if we press shift F, they're all considered uh, one poly group. So we can go through and make a couple of edits for this. The first thing I want to do is uh, change the geometry. So it's something that we can work with. ZBrush isn't great for um, working with triangles. 
So in theory, you can use triangles, but you won't have access to uh, giving it subdivisions and things like that. So luckily, people might have heard of the Z remesher. And so once we open geometry and then come down to uh, Z remesh, we have the Z remesher. So I'm just going to do a standard Z remesh. It's not going to be perfect, but you'll see some of the options that we can change for better garments. Um, so it's it's reasonable, but again, it's it's all one piece. Um, the topology is okay. It's following following the curves and stuff. Um, I do want to split this up even further. So one setting that's really good to use is the detect edges setting. So what detect edges is going to do? Uh, it's going to try and maintain the edges that we've got here um, because if if you look when we exported them, they kind of line up perfectly. If we can keep as many edges as we can and then Z remesh is going to help us down the line. So I'm going to activate detect edges and then use Z remesh. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to put in a little bit extra resolution so it picks up more folds. Um, so for example, if I put six, I don't want to go too high because then the final subdivided version is going to be massive, but I'm just going to put six in. So it's done a reasonable job. Um, again, at every stage, I'd have a look just to see that there's no errors. I think I can see one up here, uh, which is fine. You're never going to get it perfect, um, but be happy to assume that we can just come in here and fix this. So that's not, not a major problem. So we've got the topology that we want. Um, the next stage is splitting up into polygroups so we can work on individual segments. So if I come down to polygroups, um, there's a button called auto group and basically what's going to do is it's going to split into components that we can start to isolate so whenever you hold control and shift and click you can then isolate that section of the garment and work on it so it can be really useful for things like um, stitches or if you're trying to focus things down or, or do intelligent pieces of masking so that's a good stage and then if we want to show show or hide um, polygroups it's shift f I'm just going to keep them shown just so we can see things like topology in the groups. Um, the next stage is giving it a thickness. So we want to have thickness not just sort of like a displayed polygroup double-sided. The best way to do that is a couple of ways which I find is uh, edge loops and under edge loops ZBrush has a feature called panel loops. So I'm going to keep all the settings as default just so you can see what happens. So whenever I press panel loops, what it's going to do, it's going to give it uh, a certain thickness. It's going to smooth it at the same time. And also it's going to ins insert some edges along the inside. Um, and then also it gives us some automatic polygroups that can sometimes be useful. So panel loops is often used for like hard surface stuff, but for here we're using it um, in garments. So I'm going to undo that. At this stage, it's also worth um, just duplicating our subtool. So just uh, for example, if we make a, a big mistake, we can always go back to this object. It's almost like making iterations. So I'm just going to duplicate that uh, and then also click the hide icon just so we know we're working on the second version. So keeping it in stages. So back to uh, panel loops. So one thing I do want to change is I'm going to turn the loops down to two just so there's not so many edges on the inside. Um, and also I'm going to turn the polish down to zero. So that means it's not going to smooth those edges and make them rounded like, like you saw beforehand. So if we look at this now, it's a bit more accurate to what we want. Um, it's not perfect. So one observation to be made is if I click panel loops, it's kind of extracting itself outwards a bit. So that could be annoying because it's not so accurate to when we, when we rendered it in um, or simulated it in Marvelous Designer. Uh, one way we can fix this is by changing the elevation. So at elevation 100, it's basically uh, radiating outwards and giving geometry outwards. If we change that to minus 100, what it's going to do is it's going to go back inwards. So now we've got something that's more accurate to how we made it, but it's also got that thickness that we can start to play with. Now, the next stage is up to you. Um, when you panel loop, you can see that a slight bevel has been given here. So it's almost like cutting the edge off. Um, it's purely preference, but what I like to do is just turn the bevel down to zero. 
so that when I click the panel loops, everything is um, kept as accurate to how I made it, but I'm just giving it a particular thickness. Um, so after that stage, zoom out, um, have a look around it. With game meshes, you usually have a little bit of extra thickness um, because the camera is going to be from a certain distance. You want to almost uh, double up the thickness of the actual cloth. You know, a shirt's not really going to be that thick, but from a distance, you can't see that uh, with the amount of pixels that are on the screen. Um, so from here, we can be happy to subdivide because we did the Z remesh. And now we uh, get kind of like smoother folds that we'd come and iterate on top of. Um, if you want to, you can start to layer because uh, we've got our polygroups. If we go to polygroups mode, um, the polygroups are laid out in a way where they've also selected the edge. So if you want it to isolate a, a particular component, it's only really going to isolate the face and not the actual um, unit itself. So. The way we can fix that is just go back to polygroups and then click auto group again. And then what you can see is it's divided it into its um, sub components. So if I want to isolate this now with control shift, it actually selects the entire the entire piece of garment. Um, so with this, you can start to think about layering um, clothes on top of clothing on top of each other. You know, when it's sewn, it's not just stuck together edge by edge with glue, although it sometimes can. Um, but furthermore, they kind of overlap each other. So if I was going to go control shift and then click this, and then also I could hold control and then click into the empty space on the canvas once, that's going to mask uh, this unit. And then if I control shift and then click off to the side, it then brings everything back. Um, what I can do now is if I use something like the move tool, I can start to use uh, overlapping just to give it a bit more of a realistic look to how it actually might be made. So once I've done that, I could go back over maybe with a stitch brush and then from a distance, it's going to look more realistic uh, in terms of how it's constructed. So also at the same time, um, something to be considered is we made this with individual pieces. So every individual piece is going to be defined to a polygroup. Um, but I might not necessarily want this piece to be split up uh, and stitched together. You know, it's it's going to be one cloth. I would want it with the bottom side. I wouldn't want it with the top side, but how we've made it in Marvelous Designer, uh, it doesn't lead on to how we want it to be finished in ZBrush. So the way we can go about that is by joining these pieces together before we go through the process of Z remeshing and doing all those things. So if I come back to... Um, one of the originals or load up the old export. So I'm just going to bring in the original shirt. So you remember uh, we had this and it was all, all split up and you can see that when you smooth it, it, it basically separates. Um, when you come into the poly groups and go to auto group, it then splits up into separate pieces. So if I wanted to get rid of this seam, so it, it uh, reconstructs itself as one continuous piece so we don't have it split up in the final product. Uh, what I would do is I'd hold Control and Shift and then click once to select this, this uh, piece and then Control and Shift again, I'm going to click again and that's going to invert it and then I'm going to uh, click the other piece that I want it to be connected to. So basically we've just split the, uh, the main body from, from that individual sleeve. I'm now going to click Control, which is going to uh, mask everything that I can see on screen. And then if I press Control and Shift and then click again, it's going to bring everything back. Um, once we're at that stage, we can then go to Geometry um, or Subtool. Sorry, if we go to the Subtool, we have a split feature. And I'm just going to split the unmasked points to break this off uh, into its individual subtool. So I can split the unmasked points. And now I've got my individual sleeve that I can work with. So when we come into, uh, you know, classically, we'd come under the Z remesh, and then that's going to be split into two individual pieces almost. Uh, we don't want that. So before that process, what you can do is if you come into modify topology, um, there's going to be an option called weld points. And then what weld points is going to do, it's going to assess the mesh, uh, see where these gaps are. Uh, and then basically weld uh, vertices that are 
base uh, kind of near each other and that's dependent on the welder distance so uh, I think one is good I, I weld points now if you see if I smooth it it's uh, considered connected and it's all one piece um, I know the polygroups are different but that's just because uh, poly polygroups are based on the polygon not not their connection so if we wanted to take that off you could just go auto group and then that shows that it's one one continuous mesh um, now when you come into the Z remeshing it's not going to Z remesh itself in individual components it's going to Z remesh as one entirety um, after you've done that for all the pieces that you like I'd suggest uh, combining it or merging it back onto the original so here you'd go merge visible or you'd go uh, merge down to bring this back onto the main piece um, the nice thing about this is once you've done that you can re-input some of the, the seams that you want so with this sleeve once we've isolated it we might want to seam uh, down the center so instead of having that as a, a normal overlap we could just simply use something like a dam standard and then fake the seam while at the same time having the nice continuous uh, mesh so the workflow is um, pretty basic and just covering those islands that probably the most difficult thing is uh, trying to counteract the way you've made it in Marvelous Designer so sometimes we have to make it in individual pieces because it's a bit easier um, if you didn't want to go through the process of connecting and combining it here and wanted something more accurate you could come in and weld them first um, but the way I look at it is that depending on which one you're more comfortable in or so you've got to think about time restrictions and accuracy you know I could come in and, and start to weld all this up in here and then re-export it but it's just easy enough and I have more control uh, to do it in here so those are the things to think about once you've um, once you've got to that stage it's all about trying to replicate um, your references and bring it to something that is similar to like a, a shirt so in this example just using um, seams re-overlapping things and just neating it up and keeping the the sub tools in and the poly groups in different pieces um, my suggestions and my tips for this is don't try and achieve 100% perfection in all your uh, cloth simulation goals treat this as an overall primary forms to secondary forms there's going to be occasions where when you import it into here you are you are going to get a little bit of loss um, but any artist who's worth their weight in gold is not going to care about that because they can just re-input uh, these and redefine all the the little folds and stuff so don't stress it too much if you lose a bit of resolution but then again uh, depending on this it's actually pretty pretty accurate and one-to-one -one. and then you can always use this as your own personal reference to uh, re reallocate like um, all the folds back into it um, so that's how you get a, a garment into ZBrush and then split it up in certain ways in preparation to uh, start sculpting on.